info and welcome to teach right dot me so in this in this lecture this is a lecture two for protozoans protozoans lecture number two in this lecture we will be discussing alphidium the type study alphidium so the alphidium belongs to the phylum protozoa okay it belongs to the phylum protozoa the order it belongs to is foramini ferida so what is mean by foramini ferida i will be discussing in the later slides so its genus is alphidium its genus is alphidium its species is crispum okay so it's known as alphidium crispum alphidium crispum okay so you can see the diagram in here okay this is the diagram for alphidium this two will be considered right okay so you may note the diagram so the alphidium is the dimorphic so here you can see in here what is dimorphic 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 foramini ferin okay so alphidium is a dimorphic foramini ferin what is mean by dimorphic dimorphic means the organism which occurs in two different forms two different what two different forms so what are the two different forms of alphidium we will be studying in later so first you remember that dimorphic means the organism which exhibits in two different forms and what is mean by foraminiferin what is mean by foraminiferin foraminiferin means foraminiferin means the organisms the organisms or the protozoans okay the protozoans which have only a single shell which have only a single cell and the whole body is covered by a shell hard shell i mean their whole body is covered by a hard shell and they have only a only a single cell they only have one cell in their whole body and their entire body their entire body is covered by a thick and hard shell those organisms are called as those organisms are called as foraminiferin you can see over here just a minute yeah you can see over here foraminiferin okay it is called as foraminiferin it is also called as pore bearer okay it is also called as pore bearer or polystomella what is mean by pore bearer or polystomella what is mean by pore bearer that it bears pores where it bear pores i'll show you okay here it bear pores you see over here see the in the diagram here it bear pores it has a shell the outer shell in the outer shell it bear pores okay in the outer shell it bear pores these are the pores over the entire shell of alphidium equally distributed whatever these red ones are there these are the pores so what uh, in this video we will be discussing habitat and habit and morphology habitat and habit the alphidium will be where the alphidium will be living okay and its complete morphology structure and its internal structure will be discussing in this video okay so morphology includes shell here you can see just a minute here you can see the shell which is represented by number one the outer part the outer part is called shell and the cytoplasm the number wait whatever this uh, here this is the cytoplasm before cytoplasm here chamber is there right so fourth one this is the chamber this is the entire chamber the entire chamber consists of the cytoplasm you can see this cytoplasm the green color which i indicated is a cytoplasm so the entire chamber are equally distributed with the cytoplasm 
okay so these are the chambers whatever here are there these are the chambers these are the chambers okay so inside the shell this is the complete shell inside the shell inside the shell we see chambers okay we see chambers and inside the chamber inside the chamber we see cytoplasm okay the order is shell then inside the shell we have chambers then inside the chambers we have cytoplasm then inside the cytoplasm we will be having nuclei nuclei mitochondria mitochondria food particles and some xanthosomes which impart color to the which gives color to the elphidium okay so let's not go more into this and we'll be discussing this all shell cytoplasm pseudopodia and dimorphism briefly okay so first remember the outer part here the, this part is shell okay this part is shell and the cytoplasm whatever i have indicated in before this is the cyto cytoplasm and this is the chamber okay inside the entire shell we have chambers these are the chambers okay these are the chambers inside the chambers we have cytoplasm okay inside the cytoplasm we'll be having nuclei and something more okay hmm so this is the diagram for that see this is the complete shell this is the shell here you can see this is the shell and these are the chambers how they look like they look like v-shaped right so they are the chambers so these are the chambers and inside the chambers we have cytoplasm we have cytoplasm this is the cytoplasm this is the cytoplasm and inside the cytoplasm we have what do we have we have nuclei mitochondria and this is the cytoplasm the cytoplasm is distributed equally in each chamber it's not like cytoplasm is given more for the some chambers and less for some chambers it's not like that yeah though the small chamber has a small some cytoplasm so the cytoplasm is equally distributed okay so the cytoplasm is equally distributed and this is the chamber and whatever the green color inside it is cytoplasm okay so the shell chamber then comes cytoplasm and here these are the pores okay let me clear this these are the pores the shell the shell this is a shell it bear pores okay it bears pores these are the pores indicating it over here these are the pores from the pores from the pores from the pores the cytoplasm whatever the cytoplasm is there will come out okay will come out and we'll be discussing why does it comes out okay see here from the pores the cytoplasm from the chambers these are the chambers from the chambers the cytoplasm will be coming out and moving inwards also it's not like cytoplasm is coming out itself okay it will also move into and come forward to and fro like okay so the shell shell consists of chambers and chambers in turn consist of cytoplasm okay cytoplasm so let's discuss about elphidium the elphidium will be having the habit and habitat so what is the habit of elphidium and habit and habitat elphidium is a free living okay it does not live in groups groups means groups or colonial or colonies in form group colonies means like ants ants we see ants ants live in the colonies there are many ants inside a mud mud like house they build a mud like house and they'll be staying inside that like they will be having 
what they will be having colonies they will build the colonies is it not but elfidium is not like that it will live freely that it does not have uh, anyone to stay with so it is free living and it's aquatic okay it is aquatic means it it stays in the water without water it cannot survive though in the water it lives in the ocean water not in fresh waters only in the ocean waters okay so the elfidium lives in the ocean water so how it is in color it is pale yellow in color elfidium exhibits pale yellow color okay so the elfidium exhibits a pale yellow color how it is an it is an in unicellular organism it is unicellular okay it is a unicellular organism that means it has only one cell and one cell will perform all functions like excretion digestion locomotion reproduction and whatever it may be all the metabolic act activities is carried out by only a single cell so it is called as unicellular uni means one cell cellular means cell the organisms which have only one cell are called as unicellular organisms okay so let's see its morphology morphology means whatever the internal structure is there is called morphology okay inside the morphology we have shell shell then chambers then cytoplasm after shell we'll be seeing chambers then after chambers we'll be seeing cytoplasm and after cytoplasm we'll be seeing pseudopodia okay this is the flow okay this is the flow we go in okay the shell contains chambers as i told you this is the shell sorry this is the shell the shell contains chambers these are the chambers okay these are the chambers the cell shell contains the chambers the chambers are how how they are shaped like they are v shape you can see here it is a v shaped chamber and here also the v shaped chamber okay it is a v shaped chambers so how many chambers are there in one elfidium roughly they are 40 to 50 chambers in one elfidium okay in one elfidium in one shell we can find 40 to 50 chambers roughly so the chambers are filled with the cytoplasm in the previous slide itself i've shown you the chambers are filled with the cytoplasm here i'm indicating with the green one so they are filled with the cytoplasm you can see it over here is it not the chambers are filled with the cytoplasm the cytoplasm in turn in turn means again the cytoplasm consists of small nuclei see it contains of nuclei is it not this contains nuclei the cytoplasm contains nuclei okay cytoplasm contains nuclei in the elfidium the interesting thing is it does not have mouth is it not that does not have mouth the shell is hard and oval in shape this shell the entire shell is hard okay it is hard like coconut and oval in shape oval shape means like egg shaped egg you know egg right so it is egg shaped okay the shell is made up of calcium carbonate calcium carbonate is a hard sub hard substance hard and translucent substance okay this is the calcium carbonate and the shell the outer shell whatever the outer shell is there this shell this shell is made of calcium carbonate ca co3 okay so you can see the shell this is the shell and it is made up of ca co3 okay so the central part of the shell is called umbo 
whatever the central part is there i'll show you see here this is the central part of the shell this is called as umbo okay what it is called as umbo i'll show you see here this is the central part this is the central part and this is also the central part we call it as umbo okay guys so the central part of the shell is called as umbo and the shell of elpidium is perforated here you can see this is the shell okay this is the shell and it contains pores 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 means holes holes the shell of the elpidium is perforated okay it contains holes why does it contain holes we'll see later so the shell of the elpidium is perforated it contains pores the cytoplasm comes out of the pores okay and extends out in the form of pseudoporia this is the elpidium think it roughly and i'm drawing only one chamber okay we'll draw two chamber or some more okay we have drawn an entire elpidium these are the chambers and we will fill the cytoplasm it is a cytoplasm in the chamber okay it is a cytoplasm cytoplasm of the chamber inside the cytoplasm what we have we have nuclei okay we have nuclei in each chamber we'll be seeing one nuclei or many nuclei okay so inside the chamber we'll be having the nuclei so the inside and the shell the outer shell here the outer outer shell consists of pores pores means holes i told you earlier that it consists of pores the outer one consists of pores from these pores this green color cytoplasm wait this green color cytoplasm will come out okay will come out to form pseudopodia pseudopodia means false feet false projections why the pseudopodia is there whenever this organism wants to move this cytoplasm comes out from the pores see from the pores itself the cytoplasm is coming out this is called as pseudopodia okay it is called as pseudopodia pseudopodia means false feet false feet they are temporary they are temporary projections it's not that cytoplasm is coming out permanently it will also go inside cytoplasm will go inside and whenever the organism wants to move the cytoplasm comes out how this the cytoplasm looks like how this pseudopodia looks like it looks like net right see here it looks like net it's forming net hence it is called as reti reticulopodia the pseudopodia which looks like net is called reticulopodia okay so the shell consists of many chambers that is 50 chambers i have told you earlier that it consists of 50 chambers the chambers are v shaped okay here you can see that they are v shaped chambers v shaped v shaped chambers okay whatever i am giving you you i'll be providing you a pdf from there you can write all this matter okay so the cytoplasm the cytoplasm is a third most morphological feature of elpidium as i told you earlier that these chambers will be having some cytoplasm inside the cytoplasm we'll be seeing the nuclei and some mitochondria food particles let's see here the chambers in the shell are filled with cytoplasm okay are filled with cytoplasm the cytoplasm surrounds the entire shell making the organism internal here where is it okay 
here is the cytoplasm the cytoplasm is not only limited to the to the chambers it is also surrounding the entire shell okay when the cytoplasm is coming out from the pores it is surrounding the entire shell making this organism making this organism internal okay this organism then becomes internal right so the cytoplasm outside is called as ectoplasm the cytoplasm outside is called as ectoplasm and whatever the cytoplasm inside the chamber is present is called as endoplasm okay the cytoplasm is outside the if this is the shell and these are the chamber the cytoplasm outside the, or the outer cytoplasm is called as ectoplasm and the inner inner cytoplasm is called as endoplasm inner means inside the chambers okay so the cytoplasm surrounds the entire shell making the organism internal the cytoplasm inside the shell is called endoplasm and the cytoplasm outside the shell is called as ectoplasm it is ectoplasm and endoplasm okay so the endoplasm contains mitochondria as i told you earlier that that shell shell contains chambers chambers contains cytoplasm cytoplasm contains mitochondria cytoplasm sorry cytoplasm is again divided into how many parts how many types ectoplasm and endoplasm endoplasm is seen in the chambers inside the, the cytoplasm inside the chambers is called as endoplasm in endoplasm we will be seeing mitochondria we will be seeing food particles and brown colored substances which imparts the color these brown colored substances will impart some color to the elphidium okay so pseudoporia pseudoporia you we all know what is pseudoporia pseudoporia means false feet okay pseudoporia means false feet false feet these are the temporary projections okay the cytoplasm which extends out from the chamber is called as pseudoporia and pseudoporia can be withdrawn in the lightning speed in the light speed that is 3 into 10 power 8 in this much speed the pseudoporia can be drawn in and out okay so how it is done in this case this is the this is the elphidium and these are the chambers okay these are the chambers inside the chambers will be having will be having will be having what will be having cytoplasm and and we also will be having pores this is a pore this is a pore this is a pore and these are the pores and from these pores from these pores the cytoplasm will be coming out from these pores the cytoplasm will be coming out okay in the form of net net like in very speedily it's not a uh, slow process it's just a speed process and this this pseudoporia helps in the moving movement of the organism okay the vibration of the pseudoporia will help the organism to move forward and backward okay so remember this this side of uh, this pseudoporia is in the form of net like structure hence it is called as reticuloporia reticulo poria okay are we erasing all so here we can see this again this is a shell these are the chambers and this is a cytoplasm and here it is a pore from this pore from this pore the cytoplasm is coming out okay the cytoplasm is coming outside in the form of net you can see here all this cyto all this pseudoporia the cytoplasm will come out and form the pseudoporia and here we say it as pseudoporia the cytoplasm which came out 
is pseudopodia from where it is coming guys it's coming from a pore from the pore okay hmm so i as i told you earlier in the earlier slide i will be seeing it so as i told you that elfirium is a dimorphic dimorphic will be seeing here what's the meaning of dimorphic and dimorphism what is dimorphic what if i say an organism exhibit dimorphism dimorphic means if something exhibits in two different forms okay two different forms two different forms if something exhibits in the two different forms it is said to be exhibiting the dimorphism okay likewise elfirium also exhibits the dimorphism okay it can be seen in two different forms it can be seen in two different forms so the first form is microspheric form and the second form is megalospheric form okay so the first form is microspheric and the second form is megalospheric form so the microspheric form in the microspheric form the proloculum proloculum is the first chamber the first chamber in elfirium whatever the first chamber will be formed in the elfirium it is called as proloculum okay it is called as proloculum the first chamber wherever it may be the first chamber is called as here you can say it, it as proloculum the chamber which is formed first is called as proloculum okay so the first formed chamber is called as proloculum that is small in size that first formed chamber will be small in size okay so many nuclei are seen in the microspheric form so whatever the nuclei is present in the cytoplasm the nuclei are not one they are many nuclei huge number of nuclei are seen in the cytoplasm in the microspheric form okay in the microspheric form we see many nuclei in the cytoplasm okay so this form reproduces by sexual asexual method okay this form reproduces by asexual method you better remember it that this form reproduces by asexual method it will be discussing in further so first you remember what is micros elfidium exhibits in two different forms first one is microspheric form and the second one is megalospheric form okay so the microspheric form has the small shaped chamber first chamber whatever the first formed chamber will be small okay the first formed chamber will be small it is called as proloculum proloculum means first chamber first chamber first formed chamber so the first chamber will be small and inside the cytoplasm we see many nuclei many nuclei we will see we will see many nuclei okay so and the major differentiating thing from the microspheric form to megalospheric form is in the microspheric form we will see a sexual reproduction and in the megalospheric form we will see the sexual reproduction okay so this is the microspheric form and megalospheric form if we talk about megalospheric form megalospheric form the proloculum is big in size the first formed chamber will be large in size okay only one nuclei is present wait a minute so let us assume this as elfidium okay this as elfidium and this as cytoplasm this as cytoplasm so it has only one nuclei in each chambers it has only one nuclei in each chambers and this megalospheric form reproduces by it's by only sexual method it's not by asexual method okay so this form reproduces by sexual method okay in the previous slide we have seen that microspheric form reproduces by 
for asexual method and here in the megalosporic form it reproduces by sexual method okay so locomotion how locomotion is seen in these animals alpherium is mobile in form that means it it is always moving it's not stationary okay it's moving it moves in the creeping form creeping do you know creeping okay it's in the creeping form alpherium moves with the pseudoporia whatever this pseudoporia is there alpherium moves and we well know that how pseudoporia is formed by the cytoplasm when the cytoplasm moves outside from the pores the pseudoporia are formed so the nutrition in f uh, what the alpherium feeds alpherium is a omnivore that is it feeds on both plant as well as animals so it is holozoic by nutrition and it eats on algae it feeds on algae so how it feeds on algae assume if this is algae wait assume if it's algae this is algae assume this is algae and if it comes nearby alpherium it traps it in the net which net pseudoporial net this is the pseudoporia traps it in the form of i have told you earlier that the pseudoporia is net like structure in alpherium okay hence it is called as reticulopodia it traps it and releases some enzymes and digest it okay okay so respiration how does alpherium respires alpherium respires by the body surface by the surface of the body here is the surface of the body respires okay so the respiration is by diffusion and excretion the waste material is excreted by the diffusion the whatever the waste material produced inside the alpherium will be excreted out through diffusion diffusion means movement of water from higher concentration to lower concentration so reproduction as have, as we have uh, discussed earlier that alpherium exhibits in two different forms one is microsporic form and the other is the megalosporic form microsporic form reproduces by asexual method and the megalosporic form reproduces by sexual method so we'll be seeing all this in this slide alpherium exhibit alternations of generations what is mean by alternation of generation alternation means alternatively okay if in one generation we see microsporic form microsporic form then in the other generation we see megalosporic form okay if in one generation we see microsporic form then in other generation we will be seeing megalosporic form alternatively they are formed if in one generation it is formed and in one generation this is formed in third generation this will be formed in fourth generation this will be formed in the fifth generation again microsporic form in the odd wise they will get their numberings okay so this is the alternation of generation microsporic form is seen and microsporic form is seen and in the other generation we find megalosporic form okay in one generation if we see microsporic form then in other generation we will be seeing megalosporic form microsporic form reproduces by asexual method okay asexual method that is by multiple fission and the megalosporic form reproduces by sexual method okay it is by sexual method only it is not by asexual it is by sexual method by gametes by producing the gametes so wherever the megalosporic form comes it is by sexual method see here it was a printing mistake right over there so my megalosporic form reproduces by sexual method okay hmm so here you can cut it so megalosporic form reproduces by only sexual method by gametes and microsporic form reproduces by a sexual method that is by multiple fission so how this multiple fission occurs we'll be seeing here 
first of all remember that microspheric form will reproduces by asexual method that is by multiple fission to give birth to megalospheric form yes microspheric form will give birth to megalospheric form by asexual reproduction then again megalospheric form by sexual reproduction will give birth to microspheric form okay so here you can see over here my megalospheric form by sexual method gives birth to microspheric form and this will give birth to megalospheric form microspheric form by asexual method gives birth to megalospheric form and megalospheric form by sexual method gives birth to microspheric form okay so the cytoplasm of the microspheric form comes out of the shell and surrounds the shell if we assume this as a shell and this as a chamber and this as the cytoplasm okay so all this cytoplasm comes out of the shell and deposits upon the shell over the shell it deposits okay and whatever the nuclei is present i have told you that in the microspheric form we will see lots of nuclei and whatever the nuclei is present all the nuclei will divide repeatedly it will divide repeatedly it will divide and each nuclei will get some if let us say if this is a nuclei each nuclei will get some cytoplasm okay each nuclei will get some cytoplasm if these are nuclei all these nuclei will get some of some sort of cytoplasm okay the nuclei of the cytoplasm divides repeatedly to form many nuclei this nuclei divides to form many nuclei okay and at this stage these cells are, uh, will be looking like amoeba okay so here we call it as amoeboid cells and then each nuclei gets a bit of cytoplasm i've seen it over here i've drawn it over here finally a shell is secreted inside the chambers uh, inside the shell chambers of the form finally at last at last this is the nuclei and this is uh, some cytoplasm finally finally a shell will be secreted from outside and the chambers will be formed okay and all these nuclei all these nuclei will be equally and cytoplasm will be equally distributed to all the chambers so microspheric form microspheric form by asexual method by multiple fission gives rise to megalospheric form did you understand okay so sexual reproduction sexual reproduction is seen in megalospheric form yes it is seen in the second form that is megalospheric form the nuclei of the megalospheric form repeatedly divides each nuclei get a bits of bit of cytoplasm and now at this stage they are they are called as isogametes okay here here you can see this is the shell wait just a minute and this is the shell these are the chambers okay these are the chambers and if it is a cytoplasm and if it is a nuclei this nuclei will divides number of times this will divide number of time to form many nuclei these are now called as gametes okay they are they are of same type no one is like male or female gamete they are of same type of gametes so we call as isogametes isogametes iso means same okay same same kind of gametes are called as isogametes so the nuclei uh, uh, whatever this nuclei is divided to many nuclei all will get some cytoplasm equally 
okay they will get some of cytoplasm and now at this stage they are called as gametes gametes they are of same type okay same type of gametes so they are called as isogametes they are not like male or female they are of same types of gametes so they are called as isogametes these isogametes will further fuse together okay what is the what is the role of gametes they will in the humans these gametes will fuse together to form a zygote and here these two same gametes will fuse here to form a diploid zygote these are isogametes okay because they are of same shape and there is no differentiation here okay so they are the isogametes so whatever the gametes are formed they are released into the water here and once again whatever the gametes were formed by the division of this nuclei whatever the gametes were formed they are released into the water here only the gametes will be formed inside the chamber okay inside the chamber only the gametes are formed they are released released into the water as the as this this shell you can see here if this shell burst by the accumulation of the gametes this shell will be bursting and all these nuclei will be all these gametes we say all these gametes will be released out okay so now at this stage these are called as isogametes right i have said to you that there is no differentiation between the gametes so they are called as isogametes these isogametes are released in the water as the parent shell burst out then how the fertilization takes place the isogametes the isogametes swim in the water for some time okay they enjoy their swimming for some time and then they lose their cilia if this is the cilia how they will be moving with the help of cilia right so at last they will be losing this cilia okay they will be losing the cilia and they will just form like this okay so non motile they will form non motile before that they were motile and they will form non motile these isogametes fuse themselves to form a zygote to form a zygote each zygote secretes a shell and form microsporic form this zygote then it will secrete a shell okay they form then it forms microsporic form mygalosporic form by asexual reproduction by sexual reproduction it gives microsporic form as i have told you earlier rem you better remember that we'll be seeing here microsporic form microsporic form it undergoes what asexual reproduction to give to give what to give what megalosporic form to give megalosporic form and megalosporic form megalosporic form undergoes undergoes sexual reproduction to give microsporic form okay here you can see in one generation microsporic form is formed and in the other generation we see megalosporic form here the alternation is going on if in one generation microsporic form is formed then in the other generation we see megalosporic form then in this other generation we see microsporic form okay i think you have understood so alternation of generation in alfarium how the alternation of generation takes place whatever I have explained it this is the same so the history of the alfarium shows alternation of generation the microsporic form undergoes asexual reproduction i have so said you by multiple fission multiple fission first all the cytoplasm all the cytoplasm comes out of the shell and deposits over here the nuclei the nuclei divides the nuclei divides many times the nuclei divides many times to form small small nuclei and all these get some sort of cytoplasm and they are 
they secrete the shell after that they secrete shell okay so they form megalospheric form microspheric form gives rise to megalospheric form and megalospheric form gives rise to microspheric form by asexual and sexual respectively okay here you can see the flow chart let's start with any form let's start with the microspheric form microspheric form undergoes asexual reproduction to give megalospheric form and megalospheric form then all this happens and it forms the gametes gametes these are isogametes right so the isogametes fuse together themselves to form the zygote then the zygote secretes a shell and after that we will see the microspheric form then again microspheric form will give rise to megalospheric form okay i hope you understand this we'll uh, discuss in briefly once again if you want see here this is the microspheric form here it is the microspheric form microspheric form undergoes asexual reproduction gives rise to megalospheric form the second form there are two forms right so there are two forms the first form is this one and the second form is this one okay i hope you have understood this video so in one generation microspheric form is produced then in other generation megalospheric form is seen the life cycle of elphidium takes two years to complete okay it's not in the easy way as we have said it takes two years to complete the entire life cycle and mainly the sexual reproduction begins in the summer season in the hot temperate in the hot temperature only this sexual reproduction is seen okay so it takes completely two years guys it takes two years nearly about two years okay it takes nearly two about two years to complete one cycle of elphidium one life cycle takes nearly about two years and all we have seen is uh, there are two forms one is microspheric form and the other is megalospheric form microspheric form undergoes asexual reproduction to give rise to megalosporic form and megalosporic form undergoes sexual reproduction to give rise to microspheric form here the alternation of generation is seen okay mm, thank you for watching for more videos if you like please like and subscribe the channel hope you like the video thanks for watching thanks a lot